That summer in Casablanca was humid. The oppressive heat strangled hibiscus shrubs, leaving shriveled red and pink flowers on brittle branches. People drew their curtains to keep their homes dark and cool, but children still played football outside. The older of them took the bus to the beach, returning home with their noses red and their shoulders blistered. At the market, vendors hawked their homemade ice cream or French, fresh squeezed orange juice. Asir, asir, dirham, dirham wahed, their voices getting hoarse by the end of the afternoon. At night, turbaned old men ventured out to crowded cafes where they drank glass after glass of mint tea and played endless rounds of ronda. Yusuf spent all that time avoiding his mother. In the morning, he did not get out of bed until after she had already left for work. During the day, he went to the beach with Mati and Amin. At night, he played chess or watched TV at the Oasis. He could not bring himself to talk to her. Mothers were mothers. They were not supposed to have sex lives. How could he talk to her about how he had been conceived? He also blamed Maktoub. Had his father not died in that car accident, the wedding would have taken place on schedule, and no one would have known that his mother was already pregnant. Now he knew, and that brought him shame he could barely conceal and certainly never share. By avoiding his mother, he could perhaps forget the existence of her secret. But it was difficult once September came and school started. He watched from his bed as his mother opened the armoire to pull out a button-down shirt for him to wear with his blue jeans. Here, she said cheerfully, I ironed it for you. Thank you, he said, looking away, unable to summon the same excitement. When he still believed he was the son of a respectable school teacher, he had modest but clear ambitions to become a school teacher himself or perhaps a civil servant. But now that he knew that he was the illegitimate son of a community organizer, he felt somehow diminished, as though he were already marked for an unfavorable future. They sat down to eat breakfast together. News on the radio was the usual. The king had met some foreign dignitaries. There was bloodshed in Palestine and Israel, in Iraq and the Congo. A French delegation had toured Moroccan companies and praised them, saying they were on the right track. A festival of music was set to open in Agadir. The Widad was on a losing streak. The bulletins compounded the sense of futility that had been growing inside him. It's going to be a beautiful day. He did not answer. Are you ready for registration? He nodded. Do you have a copy of your baccalauréat? He patted the bat next to him. And the photographs for your ID card? Yes. May God open all doors for you, she said. She looked as if she were about to give him a hug. He dodged it by grabbing his bag and slinging the strap across his shoulders. He stuffed the hundred dirham bill she gave him for his registration fee in his jeans pocket and left.